If you're excited by the power of Excel user forms, this series is for you. We're gonna take questions from our popular Excel VBA user forms for beginner series and answer them. Let's get into the first one. Now this question I've had so many times, how do we get a reference number next to a row of data using a user form? Let's look at three approaches in this video. Here's the first one. Now, could we get this job done using good old Excel formula? Let's get into the download file, control and down arrow to take us to the bottom of the data set. Could we put a formula in this cell to get us a reference number? Have you ever tried the column formula? So go ahead, type in column, open the brackets and then hit tab. You don't need a cell reference in there. And Excel has returned a value of two. Why is that? That's because column B is the second column in the file. So number two, in this case though, we're less interested in the columns, more interested in the row. So go ahead and try the row formula and you can see we've got 257 there. That's because we're on row 257. So this could potentially be useful to us. We're gonna need some kind of tweak here. So if I say minus eight, is that right? Not quite right. Minus seven is gonna get the job done for us. So we can go ahead um, just auto fill this down. So shift and down arrow, control D on the Windows PC and there we have our reference number. So yes, this gets the job done, but what are the drawbacks? Well, it's not great having formally in the file and particularly having the references display when there's no data. We can see there's no data in these cells. So how could we improve that? Let's look at combining this formula with an if formula to make the cells blank if there's no data there. Let's have a look at doing that. So go back into the formula editing bar, if, and then hit F2, Excel's asking for a logical test. So we're gonna have, ask Excel to check, is there a value in the adjacent cell or is it empty? We can, is it empty? We can say that by putting equals and then the two speech marks, that means blank to Excel. So we're saying if this cell is blank, what do we want to happen? Value if true. Well, we just want another blank. We want nothing to display. And then another column is gonna take us onto the value if false component. So if the logical test is not met, we're gonna to go to our row formula with the little just with a little adjustment there. So hitting enter, what have we got here? Well, we can't see anything. But if I type data in here, I can see our reference appearing there. And then control D. So these formulae have come down and then typing the data in here, obviously you'd input this data using the user form, but I can see our references appearing there. It's pretty cool getting those reference numbers using a formula like that, but it's not ideal, is it? That's because we don't want to have formulae hanging around in the spreadsheet, particularly if they're displaying as blanks, you know, people might accidentally delete them, something like that. So can we do this without using formulae or maybe just using a single powerful formula. Let's get back into the file. Let's head over to the engine sheet. It's called the engine sheet because just like a car engine, lots of useful stuff is happening here, but we don't particularly need to see it. You could even hide the sheet from the user. Let's have a look in cell B3. We've got the count A formula. I love the count A formula. Simple and powerful, particularly for jobs like this. What's it doing? We're gonna point it to a particular range. I've said E1 to E10,000. We'll talk about that in a second. And it tells us how many cells in that range have values in. As such, it's perfect for us for finding this reference number. And you can see the mechanism working in this file. Now, a couple of things with count A. Firstly, we've got to decide on a data range. I've said 10,000 here, and you might think, well, Chris, that's easy. I'm just gonna reference the whole column, which you could do using this notation, and you can see that, that it works. But what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is by referencing the whole column, we're now asking Excel to look at over a million rows. And very quickly, if you have a few of these references in the file, it's gonna slow down calculation and we wanna keep our Excel files lean and mean. So I suggest you decide yourself, what's a sensible capacity limit for this file? You know, something like 10,000 rows is often good and use that capacity. That's gonna make the formula much more efficient and it means if you exceed that capacity, you're gonna have problems. So you gotta remind yourself, I actually type these prompts in, these reminders, uh, that the file capacity is 10,000 rows, and then 
at the bottom of that capacity, and I'd go all the way around to row 10,000, I'm just gonna do it on row 280 here. I'll type in a little reminder for myself here, something like capacity limit. But if you can work within those limits, and that is a drawback of this approach, it allows you to harness the power of count A. So this value, the number of entries uh, in the file, we then take that value and put it into VBA. Let's go and find it now. So go to data UF in the download file into continue. And then we can see this line of code here. We're taking the value from B3 on the engine sheet, so that count A formula, allocating it to a variable, and then later in the routine, we're using that value of, of, from the variable to create our reference number. The third approach is super powerful. It's the approach I use on my real world Excel projects and it's entirely VBA based. So get into the VBA editor with me and let's get this working. We're gonna to go to a new module because this line of code, it's short, it's powerful, but difficult to understand if you've never done this kind of thing before. So we're gonna build it up step by step. So start a routine here. We're gonna use the cells technique. I love the cells technique because it allows us to reference a row number and a column number to get us to a particular cell. So make sure you're working along with me. We can say rows.count and one. Now, what on earth does that mean? And Excel's not quite ready for it yet. Rows.count and one. Well, rows.count is gonna count all of the rows in the spreadsheet over a million rows, and then the column number one. So it's gonna take us column A, the first column, right to the bottom of column A. But we need a little bit more to prove this. Let's get the address property of the cell we get to, and then let's externalize that value using a message box. So make sure your syntax is perfect, otherwise this work won't work. Hit the F5 key, we've got A, 1,048,576. So effectively, Excel has started here, gone to the bottom of the spreadsheet, A, 1,048,576. Now that in itself is pretty cool, but it's not getting us what we want here. So here's the logic. We're gonna start at the bottom of the spreadsheet, which is where we've got to, and go up until we get to a cell that has data, and that'll give us the last entry in the file and our reference number. How would we do that? Well, are you using this powerful Excel VBA construct dot end and then Excel up, and there's Excel down and left to right options at two, but Excel up is gonna go up until we get to the next entry that has data in. So go ahead and give this a go. Maybe stop the video. What value is this gonna return? It's not quite what we want, but we're very close. Hitting the F5 key, we've got a value of one there. That's because Excel has started in column A, gone to the bottom of the spreadsheet, and then gone up until it gets to some data. There's no data, so it's just got to the first row in the file. So what's the adjustment we have to make to get this working for us? Yeah, we can just change this to two, now Excel is gonna do the same thing in column B. We have data in column B, so hopefully it's gonna work. Hitting the F5 key, we've got a value of 256 here, back to our data, and row 256 is the next row that has data in. So we can just make an adjustment here, minus seven is it? Never get this right first time. Let's see if we do today, F5 key, and then we've got 249 there. So minus six is gonna give us our next reference number, which is 250. So now that code, I can take this uh, construct that we've practiced in a safe space, copy it back uh, into the VBA editor, into the routine where we're finding this value. And it's as simple as um, copying over the line of code that previously, of course, was referring to our count a formula. That's our solution, no formally or junk in the spreadsheets, just using Excel VBA. I hope there's some good stuff there for you and your practice, but there's so much out there about Excel these days, about Excel VBA, so what do you actually need to know? Like many people, maybe you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, so I have simplified it for you with my Excel cheat sheet. This is a single page PDF. I've set out all of the techniques that I use, the formulae, and the techniques and identified a few things that might be confusing you, might be a distraction, but you don't need to know yet. You can come to those things later. It's gonna give you structure and confidence in your Excel learning. It's absolutely free to download, single page PDF. Check out the link in the description below.